Hey guys, welcome to the webinar today. In this webinar, we're going to show you how you can work with survey data in Excel using Python with a Excel add-on called Pixel, P-Y-X-L-L. I've got the website pulled up here. Uh, it is uh, an excellent product. I, I'm really happy with it. Uh, it is paid. Uh, I think it's th about $30 a month. Um, uh, which is not unreasonable. Yeah, if you pay monthly, it's it's twenty nine dollars, uh, twenty nine dollars a month per user. Uh, so it's it's relatively inexpensive for the time uh, that you can save. So this is the one that I'm gonna show you today. There are some other options. So uh, if you want to go the open source route, you can check check out Excel Wings. So that's a another um, another. Uh, solution that allows you to do similar kinds of things. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble getting it to work. Uh, that's why I ended up switching over to Pixel. Uh, but you can you can check this out if you'd like to. I think they also have a paid version um, that comes with some extra functionality. Um, you can see it, it's quite a bit uh, it's quite a bit more expensive. So we're, we're going to be using uh, Pixel today. I'm not going to show you how to set up and install Pixel. Uh, there's actually some pretty good uh, videos on their YouTube channel that show you how to do that. It is a little a little bit tricky to get installed and set up. You know, that it takes 30 minutes to an hour, and you got to be fairly handy with the computer. You know, be somewhat comfortable with the command line. Uh, you got to use pip to install some packages. So it's, it's not something you want to try. Uh, to try to hand to a, um, an experienced computer user, so it does it does take a little bit of, a little bit of setup. However, once it's set up and installed, it is it is fairly easy to use uh, once you're in Excel, and I'll I'll show you that today. So the other thing that you need to get this to work um, is you need a Python distribution, and if you're on Windows, I would recommend WinPython. Uh, you have a lot of different options. Uh, but I, I think WinPython is the easiest to use for Windows, Windows users, and it's, it kind of comes in a self-contained distribution. Uh, but you can also just download uh, you can also just download Python straight from the web, from the Python website, and there are other kind of package distri distributions. Anaconda is another one. Uh, so this is another uh, Pyth uh, kind of bundled Python distribution, uh, but I like WinPython, uh, and Pixel will Pixel will, will basically work for with any uh, Python distribution that runs on Windows. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is uh, Excel. Windows is going to bundle some Python functionality directly into Excel. That's in kind of a beta view now, uh, so it's, it's not available yet to regular users. And I haven't had a chance to experiment experiment with it um, extensively, but they are uh, going to integrate that into Excel at some point. It looks like so. If you just Google Microsoft or Excel, you'll you'll find this uh, Microsoft web page, and you can learn you can learn a little bit more about that. Okay, so after you have installed Pixel and your Python interpreter, you're ready to make this work. And you're going to get a folder that looks a little bit like this. Now I've remain I've renamed mine to Pixel Playground, but it, the, the folder is going to look similar to this. And what you're going to the, the important parts here is this configuration file, which is where you add uh, the modules that you want to have available. It's got the the path to your Python interpreter. We can just open that and I can show you. So it's got the path to your Python interpreter, and it's got the modules that you want to make available. So these are the default modules, and you can see I just came in here and added a module called CLSA Examples, uh, which is in this same folder. So this is my code that I'm gonna that we're gonna run in Excel, um, and then it's got this .xll file. This is what you want to open when you want to create a spreadsheet that has this functionality. So you just open this .xll file, and then you do a save as, and so that's what I did here to get these uh, examples, CLSA examples. So let's go ahead and open this up. And then if you want to distribute, if you want to distribute your spreadsheet with, with the with the code that you write in Python functional, then what you, you really have to do is you've got to zip up this folder 
and uh, or put it on a network where, where your users can access it. All right, so let's show you some of this in Excel. So I have a, a simple spreadsheet set up here. So I've got uh, some coordinate data, just northing, easting, elevation, and uh, I've got two sets of coordinates here. So we've got start points and end points. For example, if, this, if these were lines, start and end, simple line segments, I've got start and, end, start and ends here, sorry. And then what I want to do over here is I want to calculate horizontal distance, slope distance, and change in elevation. Now we can do that with, with some simple formulas. Let's go ahead and add. We'll add some coordinates here. So just added that some coordinates for a line. Okay, and so we can we can do this the hard way in Excel. Uh, now this one's not too hard, right? So change in elevation is a pretty easy formula. So we can say that minus. So we can say C4 minus F4 gives us the change in elevation. Now these two are a little trickier. Now you can do this in Excel, but it's it's a pain in the butt. So we, we can put Pythagorean theorem in here and try and do this. Um, and, I've, and I've done it many times, but it's a hassle. Uh, so hang on here. And we'll try and write this. So what we want is we want the change in northing squared so we got to take A4 minus D4. Whoop. And we got to multiply that. parentheses there. No, nope, I got to add another set of parentheses. So then we got to add that to the change in easting squared. And so you can see this gets a little tedious, right? And it, it gets even more tedious if you want to try and do the, if you want to try and do the, um, the slope distance, it gets even more, more tedious. So that's a little bit tedious, and it's easy easy to make a mistake. It, it gets even more complicated if you want to do the slope distance. And the other problem with this is, you know, when you read this, you're not you're not exactly sure what's being done in this formula, right? Um, you, you'd have to you know you'd have to take some time and actually figure this out. So if somebody else is jumping in the spreadsheet, uh, they're they're not gonna. It's gonna be a little confusing here what they're doing. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna show you is how you can replace a formula like this. Uh, with a with a simple call to a function that's written in Python, and so if you go just above here, you can see I have written this custom Excel function. It's called a user defined function or UDF in Python. Uh, it's called Survey Open Source, so SOS horizontal distance, and then I just pass it in. Um, I pass it in these northing and eastings, and then it runs it runs that value. So we can actually paste that down here. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? My uh, for some reason my pixel didn't load. Why did that not happen? Hmm. All right. So I've got a little problem here. So it said I got a problem. You guys didn't see that, but it said I, I got a problem in my code on line 36, 46, sorry. So let's go see that. It doesn't know what to do with that indent right there. I'm not sure why that's giving us trouble. So if you have a if you have a problem in your code, and it's like 
I got something that's not closed out here, so let me look at this for a minute. If you have a problem in your code, uh, your your um, your code's not going to load properly. Let's see here. Trying to see what I did wrong here. It's not immediately clear to me what I did wrong in this code, so I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to just cut this out real quick. And we're, oh, let's see, that might be what it was. This needs to go. No, oh, that was good. That's, this needs to move over. That's what it was right there, I think. Okay, so let's try this again. So this is my, this is my uh, Python file with my code, guys. These are the functions. Let's see if we can get it. We can get that add in the load. Okay, so you can see the add in loaded now, and I have this pixel tab, example tab. <clears throat> and uh, just by the way, on a side note, you can you can integrate um, user interfaces in uh, Tkinter or Kinter, and um, let's see what's the other one. I think the other one is PyQt. PyQt or WX widgets, you can actually build custom interfaces here, which is pretty cool. I have not messed with that yet, but now that we have that add and loaded, we can come over here. So anytime you make changes in your Python code, you gotta come over here and hit this button. And then if everything's, if you don't have a, a problem in your code, a, a, a compile error in your code, interpreter error, it'll, it'll load. And so then we can, uh, we can reinsert this formula here. That did not work. So let's see what's going on here. Let's see if the formula pulls up. Let's see. Oop. All right. Of course, because you're, you know, I'm trying to do this for a webinar. It's not going to work. Let's see here. So then we're going to put in our coordinate values. Okay, so it's given us a, a, an actual Python error, and it says, hey, dummy, this only takes four, four values. So I don't want to put the elevations in there. Let's see here. Still saying I'm giving it six. Let's try this again here. Yeah, so something's up. What's going on here? Let's check our code file. Oh, I changed this a little bit. So hang on one sec, guys. I'm gonna pause this, and then I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come right back to this. So hang on. I changed my function names, and now now Excel can't find the, fun, the Python function. So hang tight. Okay, guys. I think I got this working finally. So we'll put an equal sign in here, and then we'll start typing our function name. So we want the horizontal distance on this one. And then I just tweak this a little bit so that it takes the elevation, even though it doesn't use it. So you can type in that formula, hit enter. So this is calculating the horizontal distance. So what's nice about this is it's a little bit cleaner. And if someone's coming in to read your code, could be you a year from now, or it could be another uh, Excel user. Uh, they have at least they have an idea now what you're doing. You're you're trying to calculate the horizontal distance on the inverse between these two coordinates. Okay, now if you look in the Python file, so that's this first function here. Okay. So I did another one for slope distance here. Okay. And we're gonna, um, don't worry if you don't understand this Python code, what, we're gonna do a couple simple examples down below here and I'll show you how to write a little bit of Python code. So let's just show you, uh, we can calculate the slope distance as well. Mm -hmm. 
again we just put in the <coughs> we'll put in the coordinate values as just parameters to the Excel function and it gives us the slope distance and again you can click on this and you can see that's what we're doing we're calculating the slope distance and then I've, I've also got the one for change in elevation calculates that change in elevation for us as well. <clears throat> okay, so let's go look at a couple other things in our Python file. So I just want to I want to show you here um, up at the top we've got a couple things we need to import. So we're we're importing from the pixel library or our module we're importing this decorator Excel funk that just tells Excel to make this available as a user-defined function, this Python function. So you can have uh, uh, another Python, Python function in here. So here's a simple Python, Python function. But because it doesn't have this function decorator, uh, it's not going to show up in Excel as a user-defined function. Now, my why, why might you want to do that? Well, you might want to do that uh, to have. You might want some helper functions in this Python file in this module that you can call in your user-defined functions, and so you can do that. I mean, you don't have to expose those helper functions as a user-defined function uh, in Excel. All right. So, if you look at this decorator, what it does, this decorator. Now, you don't have to do this, but it's this at XL underscore func, and then this decorator takes some arguments, which are uh, the, a description of the type of the parameters to the function and the return type. So you can see here, I'm telling it that I'm passing in six floats, right? Floats are, are, are floating point numbers. And then I'm telling it the return type here, it's gonna give me back a float or a floating point number. Some other programming languages, these are called doubles. And then I have what's called in Python here a doc string. So that's a, a special type of comment that describes what the what the function does and the, uh, the describes the parameters or the arguments. So we can say calculates the horizontal distance between two coordinates and returns the and returns it. We just say and returns it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you when you uh, go to insert a function in Excel, you can actually see you can actually see some of these comments in the help for the for the function in Excel. I'll show you that in a minute. So this one, let's just copy this. So we'll update these comments because I just kind of cut and pasted here. So this is the slope distance, and this one is the change in elevation. And I haven't finished this one yet. I was working on a, a function here that would return the azimuth between the two points. <clears throat> between the two coordinates. And I, I probably won't do that in this webinar. But it would be fairly easy to do that. I'll try and implement some more of these and, and get some videos on YouTube so you guys can see how you can do some of this in Python and then I'll make this uh, code file and uh, example spreadsheet. I'll try and make that available on the web for you guys too. Okay, so we're going to save our changes and we're going to reload. And then I just want to uh, show you guys if you go to insert the function here, uh, let's see. Whoop. It's not, it's on the uh, formulas. Sorry. So if we say insert function, 
and then we can go down to this pixel category and if we go down to SOS so you can see right here it actually gives you uh, the, the little statement from the doc string comment it shows up in the in the uh, insert function dialog um, and then it gives you the parameter names here and it gives you again there's that little helper statement so some of what what you code in your Python doc string will actually show up in the um, as as information presented to the user in the insert function dialog box um, if, if you want to use that okay so let, let's go ahead and show you how we're going to code a new function here and uh, and show you how that works how and then we'll load it and run it in Excel all right so let's go ahead and do that so I have just a template here for new functions so we're just going to come down here at the end of our file and uh, we'll paste that in so what, what we're going to do in this one is uh, we're going to just uh, let's see here we're going to convert decimal degrees to uh, degrees minutes seconds Again, something that you could do with a formula in Excel, but it would be clunky. And so this time we're, we're only going to take uh, one argument. So it's going to be the angle in decimal degrees. And so up here we're just going to change this. This is going to be arg decimal degrees. And uh, we're going to return. So I don't think we're going to return a float. So we're going to pass it a float, but I think this time we're going to return a, uh, a string. All right, so this will update our doc string here. We're going to say convert an angle in decimal degrees to degrees minutes seconds. Our argument is going to be whoop. so we're going to say the angle value in decimal degrees so we're just up, up, updating our doc string comment here and then we'll get rid of this <clears throat> okay so we are going to return a value here in a minute so we'll just leave that return statement Okay, so we want to convert this decimal degrees angle to degrees minutes seconds in Python. And so I know what I want is I want in uh, I want <clears throat> whole degrees. So I'm just going to say degrees equals zero. So I'm just declaring a, a, a local variable here inside of my function called degrees, setting its value to zero. Python is dynamically typed, so we don't have to declare a type an int type like we would in a, in a language like Java or C-sharp. It's one of the advantages of Python. It makes it a little faster to write your code. So we're going to do the same thing for the minutes. Now for the seconds, we got to decide, are we going to round the seconds or are we going to have seconds with a decimal part? And I think for, for our purposes, we're just going to round the seconds. And you could, you could make that a, a parameter or an argument to your function and and change whether or not the seconds get rounded depending on what your user decides to do. But we're just going to say we're going to round it. So I'm just going to save that as an int. Okay, now we need to actually calculate those values. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just take our value. So for example, let's say it's 37.52. Um, and we want to we want to round that to just get we want to round it down so we just get the whole degrees okay so the way we're going to do that we're going to say degrees equals and I'm actually going to change these names I call this whole degrees so we'll say whole degrees whole minutes and whole seconds you're going to see why okay so what we want to do here is we want to take um, we're going to say whole degrees that variable we want to set that value to we're going to 
call a function of the math module called floor. I believe it's floor. And we're going to floor or round down uh, the, uh, the argument, our decimal degrees. Okay, and let's just put some comments in here to help us understand what we're doing in the code. So we're going to say example angle and decimal degrees is, let's do something even. Okay, so what that means is we can now say, we can do a comment here and say, whole, this is just a note for us, whole, and we might delete these after we're done, whole degrees should now be 37. Okay, if we did that code right. Okay, now I'm just going to pull up a web browser and make sure I'm using the right function name, Python math module. So that's a built-in Python module that has mathematical functions that we can now make available in Excel. So here's ceiling, here's floor. Okay, so that's the function we want. Okay, we are going to... Um, then, then we need to take we need to take what's left, and we need to calculate. <clears throat> so we're going to take the fractional part of of the degree and multiply that sixty to get the number of minutes. So let me show you how we do that. We're going to say. Um, so I'm going to make a new variable here, a local variable inside the function called fractional degrees. And to calculate that, so what we really want is that we want that to be, I'm going to make this 0.5. We want that to be 0.5. <clears throat> so to do that, we're going to say take a decimal, no, arg decimal degrees minus uh, whole degrees. And that's going to give us the fractional part of the degree. So fractional degrees should now hold 0.5. So we can say that. Um, fractional degrees should now hold 0 0.5. For some reason, it did not see that as a comment. Oh, I guess I have to end this here, don't I? There we go. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to multiply the fractional degrees times 60 and floor it. That is going to give us our whole minutes. So we're going to say fractional, uh, we're going to say um, minutes equals fractional degrees times 60. Okay, so if we do that math, uh, we should now have we should now have uh, 30. <laughs> We should now have 30 minutes. 30 minutes of I'm doing that math right. Okay, so um, so then we what we want to do is we want to. Um, I think we're going to have to put an if statement in here. So we're going to say okay. So minutes. So we could have a fractional part in our minutes here. So then we then we want to say whole minutes. And we're going to use the math floor function again. Floor. Uh, let's see minutes. Okay, so now now that should have only if it has a fractional part. It, it, the fractional part we removed it there by rounding down. Okay, now let's just say we had an angle that had potentially had some fractional portions of a second in it. So we're going to say <clears throat> we're going to say. Let me think about this for a minute. So we're going to say fractional minutes. equals, uh, let's see, minutes minus full minutes. And then we're just going to basically repeat, we're going to basically re repeat that calculation. So then we're going to multiply by 60. So we're going to say, uh, let's see, seconds equals uh, fractional minutes times 60. 
Okay, so now, now the seconds value could also have a fractional part, and we decided we, we wanted to round down. So now what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna say whole seconds equals uh, math dot floor seconds. Okay, so that might work. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. We're, we're gonna try it out. So let's uh, let's go see if this works in Excel. So we're gonna pull open Excel. And we're going to run over to our pixel tab here, and we're going to reload our file. Now, I just want to show you guys there's an error in my code. So it's telling me, hey, on line 85, you have an error in your code. Okay, so we got to go look at our code. So on line 85, I got an error. So it doesn't like this right here. And I think it has to do with this comment. I must be formatting this comment improperly. So let's just delete that. And save it. We'll try this again. Yeah, it doesn't like my. Uh, I must not be formatting my comments properly. Oop. We're just gonna delete those for now. Sorry guys, that's my phone. I'm waiting on a call from the IT guy. All right, let's save that and we'll see if we can get it to load. So we'll come in here and reload. Okay, so now it, it worked. I don't. I, it doesn't see an error in my code because it loaded. So we're gonna see now if we can convert an angle in decimal degrees. So we'll type it in there, and we're going to insert that function here. Convert decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds, and then we're going to pass in this as an argument, and we're going to see what we get. Okay, so it's saying, hey, you've got an error here. First argument is not defined, so let's go look at our code and see what I did wrong here. Somewhere we are calling first arg. Hmm. Oh, right here. I forgot to I forgot to put in the return, guys. The return statement. Okay, so now now what do we want to return? So we got to return a string value here. Um, so let's we got to create that. So we want we want to create um, and I got to remember how to convert uh, integers. Uh, I think it's just the string method. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. I'm so used to I'm so used to coding in Java. Okay, so we use the string function to convert. Okay, so we need three strings. So we're gonna say. Um, Degrees as strings, or act, and to be con consistent, we should say whole degrees. Whole degrees as string equals, we're going to use that string function on whole degrees. Okay, we're going to do that three times. Whole minutes. So, one uh, helpful tip is to make sure you finish your function and return a value. So we're just converting these to strings, guys, with the string function. That's a built-in Python function. Okay, and then I'm going to glue those strings together. I'm going to join them together. So we're going to say, um, um, I think this will work. DMS as string equals whole degrees as string plus. Let's just do a dash plus whole minutes as string plus a dash plus whole seconds as string. All right, so let's see if, if that gives us the value that we want. So we'll save that and we'll come in here and reload our code. And then we'll 
we'll try this again. So we'll say equals. We're going to insert that function. Oh, I got a spelling error there in whole minutes. So somewhere I have whole minutes as a U. And I'm going to show you a way to catch these errors before you actually get into Excel. I'm going to show you that in a minute. All right, let's try it again. OK, so you can see that it, it, it did kind of what I wanted. Now, the, the problem is um, it, it does, I would like to have leading, uh, leading zeros there, and I don't. I'd like to have two zeros here on the end. So that's okay because we have a function that's written in Python and not Excel, we can do that. So let's go ahead and we'll tweak our function a little bit here and make that happen. So what that means is we gotta use a conditional statement, an if statement, and say if the whole seconds value is less than 10, then we wanna add a, a leading zero. Um, so what we want to do here is we probably want to do that down at the bottom here. So we're going to put in an if statement. We're going to say if, uh, let's see, uh, whole seconds is less than 10, uh, we want to, um, so if it's so if it's less than, actually I'm going to say if it's more than 10, if it's greater than 10, if it's greater than 10, we're just going to do what we did before. Okay. But if it's not, so if it's so if we get to this point in the code, it should be less than 10. Then we need to add the, the leading zero. So we're going to say, uh, let me think about how I want to do that. So I think I'm still going to do this, and there's probably a more efficient way to write this code. Um, so we're gonna we, we could we could move this test up, but this this will work for now. So we're gonna say whole seconds is string. So we're gonna convert it to a string, but then we need to add the zero. So then we're gonna say um, whole seconds as string equals. Uh, zero plus whole seconds is string. Okay, so let's let's see if I manage to do that without seriously dorking up the code. And uh, hopefully we'll get our leading zero on our seconds. Now we're also going to need to do that for the minutes. But let's just try this. Okay, so it didn't look like there was a mistake in our code here. I don't know why it, it seems to not like to reload the value right there. Let's see if we do. Whoop. Okay, so you can see now we have our leading zero on our seconds. Okay, but we want to do that on our minutes too. So if we have a, if we have a small value. It'd be nice to have the, the leading zero in our minutes. So let's let's tweak our code and, and do that real quick. And then I think I have one other thing I'm going to show you guys before we stop our webinar and I take questions. So uh, okay, so we want to set up a similar uh, if statement here. And actually, I'm going to change this. This is a little bit inefficient. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, we're going to change this to less than. So we're going to say, hey, if it's if it's, uh, we're going to move this up. So we're going to we're still going to do the conversion here. Outside of the conditional statement, but we're going to say if whole seconds is less than ten, then we want to come down here and add the add the zero. Okay, and we and we basically want to do the same thing for the minutes. So we can just copy this and say whole minutes. Mm -hmm. Save that, 
and try and reload it. Okay, and then we'll uh, put this value back in. As you can see, now I'm getting leading zeros in both the, the minutes and the seconds. All right, Let's try and do that in an Excel formula. <laughs> Not saying you can't, but it would be really hard. <clears throat> Look at how proud I am of my code. All right, so let let me show you one other thing. We're going to tweak this. Let's just say we wanted to allow the user to get fractional seconds if they wanted. So to do that, we're going to add an argument. <clears throat> and we're going to say arg keep fractional seconds. And so that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a true or, or false. So we need to add an argument here in our function declaration. And I think it's called a bool, a boolean value in Python. All right, let's see, let me just double check. Python, type in, boolean. Okay, so it's bool right here. I just needed to know what the type int was. <clears throat> okay. So we want to do something different here if, if this Boolean value is set to true. We want to keep the fractional seconds. So we, we really want to make it conditional here. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to add a conditional statement here. We're going to say if uh, arg keep fractional seconds equals false. Let's see. So if, if keep fractional seconds is false, uh, then we want to, you know what? That's not going to work. I'm going to have to make this a number, I think. We're going to make this just an int. And we're going to say if it's, um, if it's zero, we'll keep, we'll, uh, if it's zero, will round if it's one we'll we'll uh we'll, we we won't round the fractional seconds so let's say param arg keep fractional seconds or say if this value is zero seconds will be rounded to the nearest whole second okay so we're going to say if that is equal to zero, then we want to go ahead and round the seconds. I think that's all we have to do to make this work, so let's try it. <coughs> so let's reload our code, see if we have any code mistakes. Doesn't look like we have any code mistakes now. We need a separate formula here, so we're going to say, a, I'm sorry, separate argument. So we're going to say, we're going to pass it zero because we want to round the seconds. Okay, so that worked like we thought. Now let's give it a one and see if it gives us the fractional seconds. Okay, it didn't give us the fractional seconds. Let me try this value, let's troop this value. Okay, so it looks to me like it's still rounding. Still rounding our seconds here. Oh, let me try. Try this. Okay, so it looks like it's to me like it's still rounding. 
it look it looks like it doesn't matter what value I give it there it's uh, just making our seconds go to zero <laughs> so it might we might have we might have bigger problems in our code here guys uh, let's see yeah something's up all right so we got a bug in our code let's go see if we can find it <clears throat> so for whatever reason um, our code is it has a bug and it just it keeps it just it's just rounding everything down let's see so we do whole degrees fractional degrees minutes equals fractional degrees times 60 whole minutes we floor it fractional minutes equals minutes minus whole minutes seconds equal fractional minutes times 60 And then we say whole seconds, math, floor, seconds. Oh, um, yeah, no, that's OK. Hmm. OK, so here's where here's the other thing I wanted to show you guys anyways, which is helpful. So because I've got a problem here, it's OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this into a, a little Python IDE that will let us uh, test this code before we put before we run it in Excel because then we can like print values to the command line and do some other debugging stuff which is helpful and so the the little IDE I'm gonna recommend to you guys I use PyCharm but that's a that's a little bit more advanced uh, this, these guys in Europe have this really cool little Python IDE called Thani it's free it's open source check it out So we're going to paste our function in there, and then we can do a little debugging, which is cool because I wanted to show you guys that anyways. I didn't, although I didn't intend to put that, excuse me, put that bug in. So we're just going to run a new, a new, uh, create a new file, and we'll save it. And I'm just going to put in here CLSA examples test. Okay, and then what, what we're going to do is we're going to add some, some print statements here. So what I really want to know first is what, what, are, what is the uh, value of seconds here? Am I doing that math right? So we're going to say print seconds. Probably have to put this, use the string function on this. And just to make it a little easier for me, I'm going to say print the value seconds is so we're just going to add a couple print statements here and then what we have to do down below here is we have to actually call our our function and pass it some values okay so we're going to say um, let me think about what i want to do here uh, we're going to say dms angle equals uh, and then we're going to call our function SOS convert decimal degrees to DMS, and we got to pass it a value, and we got to give it that zero or that one. So we're going to just try it with the rounding first, and then we're going to say uh, print DMS angle. Okay, so we should get three statements printed to the command line here when we run this. So we're going to save it right here. We're going to run. Okay, and what it's telling me is, is you got problems in your code. So it says in, in line 11, we got a problem with our code. Math is not defined. Oh, because I didn't import my math module. Sorry, guys. So let's import math. And we'll rerun that. Okay, so right here it's telling me uh, the value of seconds. So we've got the fractional part in the seconds here, so that's good, and, it, and it's properly rounding. Okay, so that's good. So let's just try and tell it we want to keep the fractional seconds and see what we get here. Okay, so you can see it did not it did not keep the fractional seconds there. It, it rounded them. It, it, it made them go to zero. Okay, so why is it doing that? So we say if arg keep fractional seconds equals zero we want to take the whole seconds 
and we want to floor it. Oh, you know why? Because whole seconds equals So we're going to just have to make this seconds in order for this to work. So we can't use whole seconds here. Oh. Alright, so let's see if that fixes it. Okay, now I'm getting the fractional seconds. Okay, so um, I think we may have fixed our problem here. Now let's just try this. Let's change it back to zero and make sure we still get the behavior we want when we want to do the rounding. Okay, so now it rounds. Okay, so we fixed our code basically. Now what we can do is we can copy this back into our... So that's why Thawney's cool because you can do that debugging. So we're going to come back in here to our text editor and we're just going to paste this in. Now I want to get rid of these print statements now that we've done our debugging. Okay, so let's save this and see if we can get a value with our fractional seconds here. So we've got to reload our code. And then we're gonna um, we're gonna try and run this again. Keep grabbing the wrong one, guys. Sorry. Okay, so now you can see we have the value with the fractional seconds. So you can see that there. And then just to just just to test this, we can uh, run this again. Uh, but we'll we'll tell it to round, so we'll we'll make that second parameter zero. And there you go, there's the rounded value. Okay, so that, that's going to be really hard. So you can see we did that with basically one user-defined function in Excel. That's really hard to do. If you were going to try to do that in, in the actual formula bar, that would be really tough. And, and we could do other things here. So, for example, we could we could give the, the user, uh, we could take another argument and uh, round to a specific number of places past the decimal if we wanted to on the seconds. Uh, we could insert the degree symbol and the minute symbol. Um, so that you could you could get that formatted properly instead of using dashes. So there's a lot of other things that, that we could do now um, in a user-defined function because we have we have the full power of Python um, in this code here. All right, so that was I know that was brutal and boring. Uh, it was almost an hour, uh, but I wanted to uh, hopefully this guy. If you if you already dabble a little bit with Python and you and you like Excel or, or you're in Excel and you're using VBA, hopefully this helps you understand what you can do with Python. You, and you can actually really, you can really link to any Python library um, in your in, in your user defined function in Excel, which is super cool. And we didn't talk about it, but uh, Pixel has a lot of other functionality. Um, you can, you can uh, create, let's see here. Mm -hmm. You can um, create uh, menus and ribbon tabs and uh, you can do, you know, there's all kinds of other stuff. You can you can do those custom dialogues like I showed you. So pretty cool, totally worth it for $30 a month if you do a lot of a data analysis or data wrangling in Excel. Uh, it's a cool tool. I recommend it. You guys, check it out. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, sunburnsurveyor at gmail.com or landon.blake at redefinehorizons.com or shoot me a text message. We can talk about it. And I'll try and remember to get this code up. Uh, this code up on the on the internet where you guys can see it but hopefully that'll that'll at least get you started so appreciate you guys tuning in to today's webinar and and bearing with me there